Hello and welcome to our first ever Powerhouse Working Mom Mindset Summit. We are so excited to dedicate the month of June to all of you working mothers out there. Your job has never been harder than it has been over the past few months. And so we want to provide for you one place that you can go to for all of your mind, body, and professional support. And so today we are going to kick it off with Claude Silver. She is a Chief Heart Officer at Vayner Media. She is an incredible leader and speaker, and she is one of, honestly, the most amazing humans that I know, and she truly touches so many people's lives. So I am so grateful to have her with us today. Um, and interviewing Claude Silver, we have my co-host in this summit, Carrie Barrett. She is the founder and owner of Carrie Barrett Consulting. Uh, which is a full service media training and communications firm. And you know, she is an Emmy award winning broadcast journalist with over 20 years uh, as an anchor, reporter and producer. And so I am so grateful that she has joined uh, me in this mission to provide women support and honestly for us all to come together and to support each other in a way that we really never had to before um, given the circumstances. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Carrie and Claude. They are going to take the next 30 minutes and talk a little bit about the work-life merge that we are currently under. And then after that, please stay on and join me for the Monday Mindset Bootcamp, and we're going to talk about how do we cultivate a performance mindset, and we're going to do that for the next four weeks, so I hope that you enjoy these Monday interviews and also stay tuned for the uh, mindset work that we're going to do. All right, so with that, Carrie, I'll pass it over to you guys. Yeah, thank you so much for putting this together. I'm honored that you asked all of us to be a part of this, and I think this is a real value to uh, not only the attendees, but to the panelists as well. It's an opportunity for all of us to share ideas and to connect in a way that is especially difficult or challenging uh, during this time right now. I know that, uh, you know, as a mother of three myself, I feel like I'm running around with my hair on fire most days. And, um, you know, there's always a good chance that you'll find my three-year-old, you know, with his pants down in the front yard peeing on a tree, because that's like the state of my life right now. I, I, saw, I saw that the other day. Is that your kid? I saw that. It so might happen. Like on his front stoop, just letting it all go. I was like, okay, this is the new, this is the new world we live like, in. Like, listen, all, our, all my, stand, my standards have lowered dramatically. <laughs> I don't know about you all, but that's where I am right now. So, yep. anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much All for right. putting this together. And um, Claude, I'm yeah, excited to talk to you. How are you doing? How are you holding up? I am doing well. I, I'm just laughing about your son and I'm thinking about my 19 month old daughter and just what a <laughs> she is, what an absolute riot she is. And she, you know, she can just, she just makes my mood. She just lives my right? mood much more, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. How, I mean, has it been, Right. So you're obviously you're 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 out of your normal living situation right now. You are in a different location. Right. You moved your your family um, out so you could kind of have some privacy and, and perhaps uh, stay as healthy and as safe and as productive as possible. But that's a challenge for everybody, no matter where we are. How is how is your daughter holding up? Does she know? Does she sense the difference at all? Or is she just like, whatever, we're on vacation? She just has no idea. She, yeah. I mean, she just struts her stuff no matter where you are. <laughs> well, get ready, because I've seen that happen myself, and it can pose some real problems. <laughs> I, just, I just say, you know, my mom said to me the other day, she said, she just really likes herself. And I thought, Aww. that's fantastic. Let's keep that going, whatever that is. So she's a hoot. And no matter where we were, in a concrete jungle or here in the Poconos, she's, um, she's such a delight. Oh, that's awesome. Has it been, you know, and I want to talk a little bit about, right, with, with, which is the focus of your talk, which is, you know, everything's all mixed up right now in a nutshell. And how do you, how do you try and keep everything straight? How do you try and make sure that, um, you know, work and home life have some semblance of balance? And I would put that word in air quotes if you could see me, but um, how, how has that challenge been? Yeah, I mean, it's a challenge. I yeah. think it's, a, it's an everyday evolution. And some days it's five steps forward and it feels amazing. And then all of a sudden it's almost like a landslide back just yeah. because of the, the juggle, the absolute juggle of not expecting, not expecting to be having, not, ex not knowing I would have to be on, on yeah. camera all day. <laughs> 
and on on with the little creature all right. day. Um, and also just like sharing the sharing the the workload and sharing the energy of what it takes to to grow and foster a little one and um, you know make sure that and she's she you can't put her in front of an iPad. She's right. a toddler. Right. So she while she's independent, she needs a lot of entertaining and 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 stimulus and you know so um diaper changes yeah diaper changes for <laughs> sure <laughs> i know we're in that um i wouldn't change it for the world and that this time that i'm getting with her as as all of us are saying is um is once in a lifetime and it just so happens that so many of us are experiencing the same thing at the same time globally yeah and i think it that makes it Harder and easier, maybe. There are certainly people that we can empathize with and connect with on that level, but but you also, you know, there's nowhere to go either. There's no like, oh, I have a friend who lives here and I can I can kind of extricate myself from this stress. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. Yeah, that and also, you know, I mean, we're not meant to be our children's teachers, playmates, parents, 24 seven for an extended period of time. They need other kids to play with, other toddlers, just like we need our friends to have, you know, our own stimulating conversations with. So um, we're all in effect in lockdown and we're making them, we're absolutely making the most of it. And, um, you know, like I'm, I'm sure, you know, your kids have one another to play with and at some point they're gonna like to play with their friends and right. not with each other. Right. Well, that, uh, yeah, listen, there, there are good days and bad days. Mine are nine, six, and three years old. And sometimes they're one another's best friend and sometimes they're each other's worst enemy. But you, you are right. There's always some sort of stimulation or some sort of like social kind of engagement that can happen during the day, even if it's, you know, one's pulling the other's hair and the other one's, you know, stealing the toys, et cetera, et cetera. At least it's, it's some interaction, which is, which is better than none, I suppose. So okay. let me ask you this. It's interesting. And just to fill in our, our participants, Claude and I spoke prior to this interview. We, we didn't know one another prior to this um, summit. And it was interesting because Claude, when we were speaking on the phone, um, I always like to sit down and talk to people that I'm going to interview and say, you know, get an idea of what it is that you want to speak about and how we're going to structure things. And sure, we're going to go off script based on answers and different places that the conversation takes us. But I always offer, do you want to have a list of questions ahead of time? And so I ask, Claude, do you want me to give you a list of, you know, what I think it is that we're going to talk about? And you said, no, I don't want that. And the reason that I don't want that is because this is not, this time is not about being perfect. This time is about being vulnerable. And that was a, that's a big part of your message. Can you like elaborate on that a little bit for AR participants who weren't involved in that conversation and be what that looks like for you? Yeah. Absolutely. And that conversation was hilarious because I think you were speeding somewhere with your hair on fire and I was, <laughs> yes. you know, the weekly shop in the Poconos. So we were both parenting. In the car, we yeah. We were both in the car. And Hands free. Yep. Yep. It was crazy. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's nothing that's prescriptive right now. Yeah. And I think when I, when I take the word prescriptive and look in the mirror at what that what that could be it's it's very close to perfection because then I've kind of molded it to be a certain way and make myself look a certain way or you know sound eloquent when it comes to parenting or whatever that is and there's there is no perfection right now I think yeah. that um, every hour presents a different challenge every half an hour presents a different challenge um, and so even if I said to you, yes, please ask me these five questions, the way I woke up this morning and what's already happened in my life and what's happening in the world today and in America today, I'm already a different per I'm, I'm already going to answer those things in a different way, just based on the moment I'm in. So there is no perfection to parenting right now. And I, I certainly don't even know if there is anyway. And out of uh, my house, that much I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I would never want to feel as though I doctored anything because that wouldn't be authentically me. Yeah. I mean, it's tricky though. We feel like at least, you know, the women, a lot of the women that I've spoken with, the ones who worked from home before this and the ones who are, you know, working from home newly over the past two months or so, 
we do kind of feel this need for perfection. And I, I or at least oftentimes there's a need to project perfection. And I find the way that that infiltrates my life is that I feel the need to be working all the time. And I already did work all the time. But when I say all the time, it's like, okay, I wake up at 3.30 in the morning and I'm answering emails. And then, you know, I, I am, I'm up at five in front of the computer. I may take a break for dinner. I'm back in front of the computer. Everything is all blended together. And it's, I mean, it's really hard to separate the two. And it makes that elusive quote unquote balance thing even harder. Like how do you, what, what, what works for you? Do you have you found anything that works for you in making that balance? Again, air quotes, achievable. What what is it? <laughs> I think the 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 idea of balance is. I really don't know if it's if it exists anymore. I think it's all about the realities of juggling, the realities of integrating one life to the other life to the other life. You know, we're all, we're, this is, there's an amalgamation. And the way I was talking about it at first, three months ago, when we started working from home and I became a work from home parent was, I felt like it was a bunch of pickup sticks and I was just like doing what I could to survive almost and get through the day and, and, you know, be a good partner, a good mom, a good leader and whatnot. And, um, and I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to get it right and to make it look good because I lead, you know, a group of 850 people. And out of those 850 people, there are a lot of parents in there that were looking to me to answer questions on, um, on what they could do and could they take time out and could they tell their managers this, that, and the other. And I didn't have all the answers. So I was really kind of just going with the flow. And now I feel like we've had some time to get used to this new normal, whatever, whatever phrase you want to use. And yeah. There is more integrating. There is, there are more synergies. I find that we're not just like, I'm not bumping into a brick wall every single day, but mm -hmm. I'm also giving myself a little bit of space to be, you know, human and to not get it right. And look, you know, the fact that I'm putting my kid in front of Daniel Tiger at six in the morning because I need a half an hour more sleep, I'm going to be okay. And right. she's going to be okay. So it's, it's, there's a lot of permission I'm giving myself while still being a high performing uh, female. Yeah. But I'm, I don't know if there's balance. There's this, there's a merge, there's an integration, there's, there's a, you know, fill in the blank, but I don't know if there's such a thing as balance anymore. Do you, do you know, so and I'll share a little story that, that happened to me last week. And I, I like I said, I've, I've, I'm really struggling with figuring out where these boundaries are. And I, I'm working over load and over time. And I had a moment last Thursday where I, I was in the office and I just was like, I can't. I mean, I have put in 60 hours already this week and I need a moment. And I got a bottle of wine, went outside, everybody stay away. And I, I felt guilty about the lack of productivity, but I realized that at the end of the day, I'd actually given myself a bit of a gift. There was a respite, but it's hard to be intentional about that because intuitively, I think for most of us, it doesn't feel right. How do you make that intention? How do you, do you have any secrets, Claude? What's your secret to life? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm very similar to you. I mean, I go and go and go and go and go until I almost can't go any further. Yeah. So I, I, I have to, these days, give myself a little bit more breathing room. I used to be able to almost like hold everything up until there was only this much space to breathe at the, you know, at the yeah. center, if you will. And I'm giving myself a foot now. And I'm, I'm being able to almost say, before I get to the red flag, when it gets to pink, not hot pink, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just no good. I'm certainly no good to anyone, especially myself, when I, when I get to the red flag stage anymore. I'm just not because I think of everything that I'm personally holding already and that we're holding as a society and that we're holding as parents and all of this other stuff that, you know, the, the low grade kind of depression that we all had in yeah. the first kind of two months of COVID. It's a lot. It's really none of us could have prepared for this. I, I, I don't, I really don't think in, had we prepared, 
And had we been prescriptive, as I was saying earlier, we would have had to throw that out the window anyway. So the, the, my secret this minute is I'm giving myself a break. Whether or not that's a break and, and having a glass of wine, bottle of wine, having happy hour with my girlfriends, which has really been helpful, I have to say. Uh, going for walks, just like time out. I need an hour. I need a half a day off from yeah. parenting or just like, who am I? Like, I, I need to go. I need to not wear this hoodie anymore. Like, where are my other clothes? Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually, I have a nice shirt on. You can't see it, but I have leggings and fuzzy slippers on underneath because it's all smoke and mirrors. You know how it is. It, it is very much a feeling of being on, but but you have to be very intentional about when that when is the time that I need to turn it off. And that is a new feeling for me. And I think it's a new feeling for a lot of people. There was, there was at least some separation when we were traveling away from our home. Um, you know, we, we, we had a commute back or we had, you know, whether it was a train or in the car, we had a little bit of time to decompress. And then we, we could make that separation between work and home. Now it's like I, you jump from the chaos of being in front of your computer on camera, whatever it is, to the chaos of dinner. And then maybe uh, after the chaos of dinner, you're back to the chaos in front of the camera. It's like everything is just, um, is just blended together. How do you know? Is there anything that you know that, that you say, okay, this is when I am reaching my, here are some symptoms. I'm reaching my hot pink zone or I'm approaching red zone. Or like, what is it that tells you I need to take a step back? I mean, gosh, to be really, really honest, when I need, when I'm looking at my daughter and I'm literally like, and I'm getting frustrated and she's 19 yeah. months and she can't, she can't help it. Like <laughs> when I'm looking around, when I'm looking at my partner and I'm like, how, how did you leave the kitchen cabinets open and all that food on the counter? And then I realized, well, she's just running around as fast as I'm running around. Like when I'm getting frustrated and then I'm not, I'm not a good person. I'm just like, I'm not a good partner and I'm not you know, I'm not forgiving. Yeah. And I'm holding people to standards that, you know, maybe I don't, I don't know, maybe I don't hold to myself. I mean, that's a lie. I hold myself to very high standards and I do try to close the kitchen cabinets and wipe the, wipe the counter. <laughs> it's but a I, little thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so when I notice I am like, when I notice I'm like, oh God, can't you like understand and put those toys away? Of course she can't. I need to make a game out of it now. Right. So to be, I just need to, I need to be chill and it's very difficult to be chill while getting back to the computer, while dealing with whatever the needs are of the people I'm, I'm serving at work. And, you know, it's, sometimes it just feels like, you know, you said something, we don't have that separation anymore where you walk to work, you take the subway to work, you get on a plane. Oh my God, those yes. six hours to LA. <laughs> I used to hate traveling. Now I'm like, I would give anything to get on a crowded plane and travel somewhere, anywhere. I don't care. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so funny. So, but what, one of the things I've been saying at work to, uh, to all of our folks is, you know, we used to take these micro moments that we took for granted. You'd get up from your computer, you'd go get, you know, go to the, get some water, get some coffee, get a cliff bar, whatever. And cognitively, you got to shut off for a second yeah. and you don't get that anymore. You just no. don't. And so whether or not that's getting the wine, whether or not that's going out for a walk, whether it's a mile walk, I don't even care. You know, yeah. just doing something rather than just like, my steps are really like <laughs> desk, kitchen, desk, <laughs> desk. <laughs> so where am I gonna go today? Yeah, yeah like, dining room I, or bathroom? Yeah. Right, right. Can I take a drive to the grocery store? That might be exciting and you know, make a quick phone call. but. Um, knowing that I'm not alone in this is really helpful and um, it's really helpful and it's something I've em embraced as a lone ranger, as a self-proclaimed kind of like lone ranger, uh, yeah. if that makes sense. So I can't do any of this alone because if I did, I, I know I would stumble and I would end up hurting my family in some way, shape or form. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Whether or not that is is psychically hurting them, energetically hurting them, you know, saying something that would just be like, Claude, just simmer down. So, <laughs> Take you know, a I'm a very down. chill person as it is, but, you know, I'm not perfect. No. Well, none of us are, but there, that's the, that's the, 
the rub, right? <laughs> we, we sure do want ourselves to be. You know, it's interesting. And just a quick reminder to our attendees, if you have questions that you'd like to ask, we've got about um, the six to eight minutes left. If you have a question for Claude, please write it in the chat or the Q&A and we will try and get to them chronologically. If we can't get to them, we'll try and connect with you post. But one of the things that um, Robin Schumer mentioned in our, in our, in our chat box, and I'd like to bring it up, is she says she so appreciates you talking about how we're not supposed to be playmates, teachers, parents, friends, 24-7. And I think that's an issue even outside of this, of COVID, is that we feel like, you know, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. There is nothing I hate more than playing Barbies, okay? I just, I can't stand it. But if my daughter doesn't ask me to play Barbies five times a day, I know something's wrong. <laughs> so it's like, and you feel compelled, you know, outside of COVID to like play, 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 do, 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 perfection, perfection, perfection. And this has thrown all of that for a loop. And so how do you balance between, like, You've got your work, you've got what you know you're supposed to do as a parent. You may feel like you need to step it up right now, but how we can't do all of that stuff. No. It's possible. And it it and it eats away at our self-worth and our self-esteem. If we're not, if we're not doing enough, or if we feel like we're doing enough, then we feel like we're not doing it well enough. And if we're doing a couple things good, then we're not doing as much as we should. It's like we constantly have that that voice, I guess. I, I totally agree, and I, I actually think it is probably more so in the Western world than anywhere else because we do have access to the gadgets and the devices and all of these things that, by the way, we're using all day long, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're giving to them to use to at least, you know, stimulate them, take their time, you know, get them busy so we can do something else. I mean, I think the... I don't have, I really don't have the answers, but what I do know at the end of the day is when I see that I'm not doing anything that is detrimental or harmful to my daughter. And in fact, you know, when she does look at Daniel Tiger for the 15 to 30 minutes to maybe I'm lying, maybe it's more like 90 minutes a day, um, mm -hmm. that is, at, that, that, that's not hurting her. It's right. just not, it's not hurting her at all. It's stimulating her in some way. It's giving me a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of the lucky ones that up until three months ago had, um, had childcare mm -hmm. and now knowing, and, and by the way, on a weekend, I don't have childcare. And so I, I, that was very laborious and, and it was very non-selfish, you know? Yeah. Um, and now I'm, I'm fully in it and I am finding ways and pockets to provide to her while providing to myself. And, yeah. um, I, you know, it's just, uh, God, we're just all in it. And I think the wonderful thing about this month and what we're doing here with Summit is figuring out what is working for one another, trying that on, testing, learning. It's just like, yeah. you know, it's just like when we, when we all got into COVID, it was triage. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, you know, wow, plugging the holes and this yeah. and that and teaching our kids this and homeschooling and whatnot. And now I, I do think it's in a test and learn. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here. And being uh, forthcoming and vulnerable enough to share what the real deal is. Like there is no, there's no mask. I, I am not super mom. Right. And, uh, not superhuman either. It's funny because when, when this whole thing first started, I was like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to make eggs for breakfast and fruit and we'll have fresh granola and parfait. And now it's like, right, one kid's got his hand in, in the marshmallow bag. I'm eating out of a, you know, half a bag of Doritos, but it's a head nod and it's all good. <laughs> like, because, because you have to, you gotta, you, you just can't, you can't, you can't handle it all. Um, so I'm fully with you on the mask is off the warts and everything else are showing and that's okay. We all need to accept each other because I think every single one of us uh, for the most part is doing the very best that we can. We have, a, we ha I have an interesting question in the chat from Sally Ann and she has a question for you, Claude, and it says, how do you deal with or recommend handling the expectation that comes from work? This is beyond the pressure that we put on ourselves, but the expectation that comes from boss, colleagues, teammates to work more and more and be available more and more without boundaries. It seems as though the workday has a perception around it being all waking and just a few sleeping hours. 
Yeah, I've been getting this question a lot at work um, also because I oversee what is, yeah, I, I oversee people, so I oversee HR and have had to really talk to our leaders in terms of, uh, and our managers in terms of helping their folks feel empowered to say, I'm stepping away for a half an hour. I'm going to be offline from six to eight because that's bed, bath, dinner time. Yeah. Um, my working, what I did actually after um, the first two weeks that we were all working from home is I sent something out company wide, which meant globally, that said our working hours are nine to six. If you need to take more than, you know, two hours off, you need to slack your managers, let people know where you're going. But I think the, the real deal is either feeling empowered enough to say to your manager, I'm going to take five, I'm going to take this next half an hour off or asking your managers or your HR or whomever it might be internally to help you find your voice to do that. Yeah. And, and, and right, because your managers may not have kids or they may not, they may have other challenges that one not, might not know about. But I do think people wanna be empathetic. Yeah. But I also, we need to invite them in. And that means we have to also take off our mask and be vulnerable. And my hope and my prayer is that the, um, the, the empathy that a lot of leaders are now leaning in on isn't going to go away when we at some point start to phase into our offices. Yeah. So my, my, um, my response to that is use your voice, practice your voice. If it's not, if you don't feel like it's ready to be shared yeah. um, and then, and use it. I mean, there's something very special about this time. And I, and I do think it can afford us that much more courage if we step into it. Yeah, step into it. Because it's not easy for everyone. I do recognize that. Absolutely. I cannot believe it's already 128. So we have time for one more question. I, I, I feel like we could talk forever, but what, we have time for one more question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, attendees. I know you have a lot of questions out there, but this one is from Megan. And she has a six-year-old, right? She's a single mom, she says. And when I'm with her, she's my focus. For the first time in her life, though, when we're in the same physical space, I now have to be present at work. And I can't always give, uh, give her my focus. So what have you done to help your little one know that she's still important, important rather, while not being able to really connect with her for you know, six to eight hours or whatever it is when you're in back-to-back -back meetings? Yeah, and probably a little bit different. I mean, mine's 19 months old, so she might not, not remember this time, and I recognize that. Um, but, you know, what, what I will say is she comes up and climbs on me right when I'm in a Zoom or an interview or doing something. And I, what I have done prior to getting onto that Zoom is I had let people know that, listen, my daughter's going to come on and she's going to make her grand appearance. And that's that. <laughs> like, and, and that's that. I don't have, my partner's not here or whatever, whatever. And um, so I, I don't say no, go away. I don't go lock her in a room or anything like that, of course. But I do what I can do while giving myself permission to at least tell those people that I'm about to talk to, like, this is my real life right now and I can't hide it. So in terms of, you know, your, your story, I don't, I don't exactly know what to do other than to supply her with things that, um, A, would occupy her, but also make her feel good about herself because that's super key so that our kids aren't feeling abandoned or neglected or rejected. That's not what we want to leave them with. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, I don't really know other than, um, and it's not, the answer is not TV. I know that. And it's not an iPad for eight hours a day. So are, you know, are there some kind of cognitive toys we can give them uh, some kind of like lesson plans we can give them that we can then join back and say, you know, what did you learn today? Or yeah. like, draw me, you know, draw me a jungle scene or, yeah. I'm playing a little bit, but um, it's a tough one. It's a, it's a real tough one because she's used to having your attention. And now, you know, mommy needs to share her attention. And that's really going to be challenging. So um, I'm open to any, to any other answers that people have on that one. Yeah, I, I sometimes find that, so if I can reconnect for five minutes and they want to do this and then I say, okay, mommy's got, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes and I'm going to, I'm all in, then I need to take a break and I need to go back to the computer and, you know, do my work so I can help other people. And then I'll reconnect with you in, in an hour or whatever. And my kids, you know, the, the six and the nine-year-old tend to understand that, but the, the three-year-old is, you know, whatever he 
no holes barred. He's, he's in the front yard peeing on a tree. So, <laughs> Claude, I know it's a beautiful thing. I wish we had more time to talk to you. This was amazing. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you all for your questions. And, and thanks for having me. Uh, oh. Gary. This has been awesome. I'm glad to be in the club. Oh, you're in the club. You're in, you're in with Two, two thumbs up for sure. Thank you. So um, for all of our attendees who are here, a quick reminder, two things, that when you do register for any of the talks or any of the, um, any of the events this month, any money that you donate is going to a charity uh, called Project Kind. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about Project Kind, you can go to their website. It is Project Kind. 123.org. They are helping a lot of women right now, especially single moms who are on the verge of homelessness. So your money helps put a roof over people's heads and helps put food on their table. Uh, it's a great organization. I encourage you to go to the website and check it out. Also, uh, right now, actually, <laughs> Nicole Michelson of Vision, Vision Pursue is hosting her Cultivating a Performance Mindset Boot Camp that starts uh, at 1.33 in approximately one minute. We're a few minutes behind. The link for that is in your inbox as well as all of the sessions. So if you, um, if you would like to attend, we'd love to have you there. All of these are going to be recorded. Please share them with your friends. Please share the link with your friends because we think, I think, and I know we all do, um, that there's a lot of value here. We hope that we can create a network of support for, for women for the entire month because we all need it and we all deserve it.